What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we are breaking down week 14 of fantasy hockey. And what that means is we're gonna be looking at the best and worst schedules, the must add streamers to help you maximize your games, and also some new must add players. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. Before we get into the schedule, I wanna talk about some must add players, beginning with forwards. The first player I wanna talk about is Matt Boldy of the Minnesota Wild. So with Matt Boldy, obviously he's probably not available in most of your leagues, but if you're in a more shallow league, like six teams or less, I suggest you take a look at him. The reason he's a must add player is because Kaprizov went down. I believe the report that we got is that he potentially broke his ribs. I don't know the prognosis on that. I don't know how long he is going to be out, but I do believe he is week to week. So if that is the case, Matt Boldy is the number one guy. We saw Kaprizov go down last season for a couple of weeks, and during that stretch, Boldy was playing incredible. So we already saw that in the last game that Boldy played in. He had two goals and one assist. He had seven shots, and I think there's a good chance that he is going to break out. So if you're in a more shallow league, take a look at Matt Boldy. Next, we have some more players. Nikolai Ehlers, I doubt he's available in most of your leagues, but he's still line one and first line power play with Kyle Connor out with an injury. So. If you are in a more shallow league, I think he's gonna be pretty good until Kyle Connor comes back. Next up, we got Boone Jenner of the Columbus Blue Jackets. We just learned that he is back at practice. He broke his jaw and he's been out for a couple of weeks, but with Boone Jenner, you get a guy that gets top line minutes, he's on the first line power play, and he puts up amazing shots, hits, and blocks. So if he got dropped because some impatient owners decided that he wasn't worth their time, I suggest you take a look at him. Next up, we got Jonathan Druin of the Colorado Avalanche. This guy's played incredible as of late. He's on the first line and the first line power play, playing alongside Miko Rantanen and Nathan McKinnon. And I think there's a chance that even when Lekkonen comes back, that they keep Druin on the first line and the first line power play. Obviously, there's no guarantee that this will happen, but with the way that he's producing, I think they would be stupid to take him off these lines. So. I think there is a lot of short-term potential until Lekkonen comes back and also a lot of long-term potential for the rest of the season. Next, we got Ricard Raquel still on the first line and the first line power play. Puts up good peripherals as well. Then we got Dawson Mercer. He is currently on the first line and the first line power play with Jack Hughes out with an injury. So if Jack Hughes is out week to week, Dawson Mercer is an amazing short-term option. Next, we got Igor Sharangovich still on the first line and first line power play playing really good as of late. Gustav Nyquist, first line, first line power play, super underrated. Joel Farabee. Joel Farabee is playing really good on the Flyers. Um, he is on the first line and the first line power play. I don't know how long the power play deployment is going to last because the Flyers really mix up those power play lines, but still, he's a young player who looks to be breaking out. So please take a look at Joel Farabee. Next, we got Marco Rossi still on the first line and the first line power play, getting a solid amount of minutes. Young player, looks good out there. Next up, we got Max Pacioretty of the Washington Capitals. He just returned from injury about a couple of days ago. I think it was about a week ago. And he's played two games since his return. Obviously, Pacioretty has had a lot of injuries in the last couple of years. He's torn his Achilles twice. And with him coming back, there's a lot of rust to be shaken off. So we've seen him play in two games. The first game he played around 11 minutes. The second game he played around 14 minutes. Didn't put up any points, but the reason he's a must-add player is because there's a lot of potential. Obviously, if you're in a more shallow league, like six teams or eight teams, there is risk in dropping a player for Pacioretty. However, if you're in a deeper league, there is a lot of upside. There is a chance that his minutes slowly go up and he's in the top six and on the first line power play. That is a possibility. Right now he's on the third line and the second line power play, but we know Pacioretty is a very talented player in fantasy when he's healthy. So if he is healthy, he can put up great peripherals and score a lot of goals. If you need a player to really help your team out in a deeper league, this is your guy. So add Max Pacioretty and see if it works out. Next up, we got Mason Marchment of the Dallas Stars. Now, I do think that Marchment's production is probably not sustainable. He's not on the first line power play and his shooting percentage is pretty high at 17.7%. However, if you have to add him based off his recent production, you just have to, and you just have to ride the wave and see how it plays out. I think he's a very talented player and there's always a lot of week to week potential with Marchment. He has the ability to have big nights, but I wouldn't, totally bet on him keeping this production up. So I had to include him on this list, but do be cautious of him cooling down. Moving on, we got some more must-add forwards. We got Tyler Sagan. 
I don't know how the Stars are going to run their first line power play with Heiskanen out week to week, but there is a chance that Sagan is on that first line power play. In practice, they were running five forwards and he was on there, but then in game, they went and had Thomas Harley on the first line power play. So we'll just have to see how it all pans out, but there is the potential for Sagan to be on the first line power play. Then we got Morgan Geeky. He's currently on the first line and the first line power play on the Bruins. I don't know how long this is going to last, but he's played really well as of late, so please take a look at him. Next, we got Alex Kerfoot. I mean, I've been talking about this guy in my you know most recent must-add video, so this isn't anything new, but he's still on the first line and the first line power play, so I suggest taking a look at him. Next up, we got Chandler Stevenson of the Vegas Golden Knights. With William Carlson out week to week, Stevenson is currently on the first line power play. This is definitely a short-term option because I think when William Carlson comes back, he could be taken off this first line power play, but still, in the short term, Stevenson, I think, is a great add. Next up, we got Jake DeBrusque of the Boston Bruins. DeBrusque was moved up to the top six about two weeks ago, and since then, he's put up really good production. He has good peripherals, his ice time totals are good, he's still not on the first line power play, but still, in a deeper league, in which he's probably available, I suggest you take a look at him. Next, we got Cole Sillinger. I would say this is more of a short-term ad because Boone Jenner is returning soon, but currently he's in the top six. He's playing really well, and he's a young player that has potential. So in a deeper league, Cole Sillinger could be a very good option. Finally, we got some more players. We got Eric Halla on the New Jersey Devils getting top line minutes. I'm not expecting him to be amazing, but in a deeper league, take a look at him. Then we got Lucas Reichel. This is a young player who has really struggled this season, but with Bedard out, he's being moved up to the top line and he's on the first line power play. Somebody has to produce on Chicago and I think Reichel is gonna get a lot of minutes. So there is potential there. In a deeper league, maybe add him and see if it works out. Next, we got Trent Frederick of the Boston Bruins. This guy's on the third line, but lately he's producing extremely well. He's a young player, he puts up great peripherals, and his ice time totals as of late have been pretty good, so take a look at him. Then finally, we got Warren Fogle of the Edmonton Oilers. Obviously, he had a five-point night. I'm not expecting Fogle to have a lot of those nights, but he's on the second line with Leon Dreisaitl, and he's shooting the puck a lot, so in a deeper league, he could be a good option. Next up, we have some must-add defensemen. First player is Luke Hughes. He's still on the first line power play, and he's really putting up solid production as of late. If you're in a category league or a league that heavily values shots, hits, and blocks, I understand if you're hesitant in adding Luke Hughes, but in a different type of league in which he might be available, I suggest you take a look at him. He's a young player who could break out, especially in the second half of the season, and we've seen flashes of brilliance as of late. So yeah, I think there's a chance that Luke Hughes could have some pretty big nights and some pretty big weeks moving forward. Next up, we got Thomas Harley of the Dallas Stars. Harley is probably my favorite must-add player on this entire list just because of his low roster percentage. Defensemen on the first line power play are very hard to come by, and it's looking like with Mira he's going to out week to week, Harley is going to be that guy. We saw in practice that Stars were running five forwards on the first line power play, but in game, they put Harley on the first line power play, and he put up a power play assist. We will see what happens. I'm not guaranteeing you that Harley is going to be on the first line power play, but I think there's a good chance. Not only is Harley likely going to be on the first line power play for the next couple of weeks, but he also is going to be getting top pairing minutes. We saw how he could produce with low ice time. So I think for the next couple of weeks, he's gonna have some great, great production. Next up, we got rookie Brock Faber of the Minnesota Wild. He's on the first line power play. He's getting a ton of ice time and he puts up solid peripherals. Jared Spurgeon is out, he's on the IR, so Brock Faber's spot on the first line power play is pretty secure as of now, so take a look at Brock Faber if you need a defenseman. Next up, we got Brant Clark of the Los Angeles Kings. Now, this might be a little bit of a risky ad depending on your league size, but with Brant Clark, what we know is that he's a very talented young player, and he just got called up from the AHL. In the AHL, he put up really good numbers for his age, so maybe when he comes up and he plays, he could produce. We'll have to see how it all plays out, and we'll have to see if he gets power play time, but there is potential. So take a look at Brand Clark if you're in a deeper league. Next up, we got three more defensemen. We got Adam Boquist of the Columbus Blue Jackets. With Zach Rowinski out, it looks like Boquist is on the first line power play. He doesn't have the best even strength ice time, but he's a very talented offensive defenseman. So maybe in the next couple of weeks with Rowinski out, he could produce. Next, we got Josh Manson of the Colorado Avalanche. He puts up amazing peripherals and he's actually producing 
Um, I'm not sure if that's sustainable because of his low ice time, but still, you gotta take a look at Manson if you're in a category league or a league that heavily values shot tents and blocks. Finally, we got Igor Zamula of the Philadelphia Flyers. Now with the Flyers, they've been rotating their uh, defensemen on the first line power play the entire season. So it was Travis Sanheim, it was Sean Walker, it was Cam York. Now it's Igor Zamula. I doubt this will be long-term, but maybe it will, who knows? Any defenseman that's on the first line power play is very rare to find on the waiver wire. So if you're in a deeper league and you need a defenseman, take a look at him. Next up, we got some goaltender ads. We got Joey Decord of the Seattle Kraken. I know this one is pretty obvious and I understand that in any serious league, this guy should not be available, but his roster percentage on Yahoo is still pretty low compared to how he's playing. So I had to include him. Next, we got Stuart Skinner. He, this is a guy that could be available in a more shallow league. He's playing incredible as of late and you got to pick him up. He has no competition in net and he's looking really good out there. So that one is a no brainer as well. Next, we got Jacob Markstrom. Markstrom, despite being on a bad team in the Calgary Flames, is putting up some really solid numbers. His goals against average is good, his save percentage is good, and he starts the majority of the games. This one's a no-brainer too. If he's available, please take a look at him. Next up, we got Piotr Kochekov of the Carolina Hurricanes. I doubt he's available either, but his roster percentage is still pretty low on Yahoo. He's playing absolutely incredible as of late, and he's starting the majority of the games for a playoff team. So yeah, this one's a no-brainer to me. We'll see what happens when Freddie Anderson comes back, but there's a chance that Kochekov is starting the majority of the games for the rest of the year. Next up, we got Alex Lyon of the Detroit Red Wings. Vili Husso is injured. We don't know the exact timeline for Vili Husso, but I do think that it's probably another couple of weeks until Husso comes back. So with that injury, Lyon is starting the majority of the games and he's also playing pretty well. Take a look at Alex Lyon if you need a goalie. Next, we got Marc-Andre Fleury. He's also a goalie that's seen the bulk of starts with an injury. Phil Gustafson is out week to week, so Fleury is starting the majority of the games. He's looking pretty good out there. He played really well in that last game that he played in. And if you need a goalie in the short term, take a look at Fleury. Finally, we got Nico Dawes of the Devils. Now, this is definitely a deeper league ad, but he's seen some starts for the Devils. And if he plays well, he may take over the net. Vanacek just had a good game against the Blackhawks, but still, there is potential with Dawes. So if you need a goalie and you want to take a risk, add Nico Dawes. All right, moving on, we have the schedule. We have the teams with the most games and off nights this week. We have three teams that play four times and have three off nights. This is ranked by opponent goals against average. We have the Dallas Stars, the Minnesota Wild, and the Philadelphia Flyers. Amazing schedules in terms of maximizing your games. And I'm gonna be giving you guys the streamers from those teams to add for the entire week. Then we got the Rangers. It's a little bit of a tear break here. They have four games and two off nights. Not as good as these other three teams, but still very solid. Next, we have a tier break. We have teams that play four games and only one off night. These teams are the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Vancouver Canucks, and the Boston Bruins. And then we have a team that plays three times and has two off nights, which is pretty solid as well. That team is the Colorado Avalanche. Next up, we have the teams with the least amount of games this week. We have three teams that only play twice, and that is not good for maximizing your games. These teams are the Columbus Blue Jackets, the New Jersey Devils, and the Carolina Hurricanes. Moving on, we have the teams with the easiest opponent records this week. The number one team is the Ottawa Senators. Then we have the Winnipeg Jets, the Edmonton Oilers, the Carolina Hurricanes, and the Dallas Stars. In terms of goalie ads that may help considering their opponent record, we have Scott Wedgwood. Ottinger is day to day, so there is a chance that he returns next week, but if he doesn't, Scott Wedgwood should be in for some wins. Then we have either Jonas Corposalo or Anton Forsberg. Ottawa has a really easy opponent record, so there's a good chance that one of these goalies has a pretty good week. On the flip side, we have the teams with the hardest opponent record. We have the St. Louis Blues, a very hard opponent record this week. The Colorado Avalanche, the Washington Capitals, the Chicago Blackhawks, and the Pittsburgh Penguins. There's a good chance the goaltenders on these teams underperform. Moving on, we have the teams with the highest opponent goals against average. These teams are playing teams that generally let in a lot of goals. So there's a very good chance that the players on these teams have a pretty good week. We have the Edmonton Oilers, the Ottawa Senators, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the San Jose Sharks, and the Winnipeg Jets. Moving on, we have the teams with the lowest opponent goals against average. These teams are playing teams that do not let in a lot of goals. So the players on these teams could underperform. We have the Columbus Blue Jackets with a terrible 2.48 opponent goals against average. The St. Louis Blues with a 2.50 opponent goals against average. 
And then we got some other teams. We got the Washington Capitals, the Pittsburgh Penguins, and the Colorado Avalanche. Now is the part of the video where I give you guys the streamers to help you maximize your games. For this slide, all these players have four games and three off nights. These are players for the Philadelphia Flyers, the Minnesota Wild, and the Dallas Stars. All of the players are under 90% rostered, and I've color-coded them based off their first-line power play status. Yellow is on the first-line power play, and blue is might be on the first-line power play. Now, these rankings may differ on your league settings if you're in a category league or a league that heavily values shots, hits, or blocks, but let me list this off. We have Matt Boldy, Travis Konechny, Joel Eriksson Ek, Matt Duchesne, Matt Zuccarello, Sean Couturier, Mason Marchman, Jamie Benn. We have Tyler Sagan and Thomas Harley. One of these players is going to be on the first line power play, but we don't know the details just yet. They were running five forwards in practice, but in game, they went to Thomas Harley on the first line power play. So we'll see how that plays out. Then we got Joel Farabee, Owen Tippett, Marco Rossi, Wyatt Johnston, Brock Faber, Morgan Frost, Ryan Hartman, Travis Sanheim, Scott Lawton, Marcus Johansson, Cam Atkinson, Tyson Forster, and Igor Zamula. The Minnesota Wild first line power play is pretty set with Kaprizov being out with an injury. The Dallas Stars power play, like I told you, we don't know exactly yet what's going to happen if it's either going to be Sagan or Harley. And then with the Flyers power play, it changes pretty frequently, but for now, as you guys can see on the slide, we have Joel Faraby, Owen Tippett, Igor Zamula, who's a defenseman, Sean Couturier, and Travis Konecki on that first line power play. So if your league values power play points decently, take this into consideration. Next up, we got some other streamers that could help you maximize your games this week. We have teams with four games and two off nights, that team being one, the New York Rangers. We have Vincent Trocek, Alexis Lafreniere, Blake Wheeler, and Keandre Miller. And then we have the teams that play four games in one off night, the Leafs, the Canucks, and the Bruins. The players on these teams to stream include Morgan Geeky, first line, first line power play, Pavel Zaka, first line, first line power play, Jake DeBrusque, Charlie Coyle, Tyler Bertuzzi, Trent Frederick, Andre Kuzmenko, Dakota Joshua, Connor Garland, Suter, Mikhev, Yarn Crow, Matthew Nyes, Max Domi. Now, a lot of these players are probably ads in deeper leagues, but still, they could be good if you have open roster spots on those heavy nights. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I will catch you in the next one.